So I'd like to talk about EDCs and DACs, um, sort of general data converters, and really this conversation about you know, how good is my EDC or DAC. Right? This is often what we care about. Um, we often get hold of a hold of a device and it says, oh look, it's a 10-bit resolution device, or it's a 12-bit resolution device, or 18-bit resolution device, and we think, that's got to be good. Well, it turns out resolution is an interesting term that means one thing. How many input bits or output bits do I have? It doesn't say anything else. That's why people like this term a bit, because it doesn't say anything else other than, okay, here's the IOs that I've got to work with. What the user really asks is like, well, how accurate is it actually, right? And this is the term that's often used, the term that's used is linearity, okay? And that's the accuracy you care about. And you really talk about your bits roughly, and I'm being kind of rough approximate about this, is really going to be a log base 2 of what is my full scale range over my error, right? In other words, what is my, my um, LSB, my granularity that I get to work with? Okay, that makes sense. So, and there's more specific measures, but qualitatively, it's like that's, where, that's what linearity is about. And so what you really want to ask is, well, how linear is your DAC? That's the question you want to know, probably for how most of the times you, you work with your devices. Okay, so then you say, okay, uh, how do we talk about this? And we usually talk about two different forms of it, and you'll see these, these definitions used a lot of places. One which is called integral nonlinearity, which is really, you know, basically this is really the difference between the ideal sort of finite resolution and the actual measured structure. So this is what you typically expect. You typically will qualify this in either percent, maybe, but more than likely in, in the least significant bit of the converter you're working for. And this is the way you typically will think about the issue. So INL is typically how far off are you from the ideal characteristic. And DNL is differential nonlinearity. It basically says how much error is there between the steps. So if I have, I go between one position and I go from the next the next piece of the bits in the resolution, what is that error? And of course, that should always be one LSB, but how far off is it from one LSB exactly? And so this is always interesting to talk about, and I, I want to kind of just walk through some various pieces of things that you see with these curves, because these get used all over the place. And I really do appreciate many of these curves came originally from Phil Allen's notes um, two decades ago as he was writing his second edition of his book. So. Um, I just want to give credit where credit is due uh, for these four figures in here. Uh, he did such a good job, so might as well do that. Um, what is interesting is that you can definitely talk about different types of converters. So if you're talking about a digital to analog converter, you're typically going to have the digital code on the, on the x-axis. The analog is going to be on the y-axis. If I'm dealing with something that is an analog to digital converter, it'll be analog on the x-axis and digital on the y-axis. And so typically you'll see these same curves used for DACs and EDCs and by basically seeing how it's labeled you kind of know whether you're dealing with a DAC or an EDC in the particular structure. Linearity is a way of talking about either case. So be aware that it's true for either case. Mm -hmm. And so if I do that what I find is this is that you know, ideal curve, would, you know, you imagine ideally everything should be one straight line all the way through. Well, the reality is, well, I'm really going to have an ideal stair step case. Now, it may be that it's going to be a single just shifted kind of curve, right? So it's zero, it's zero, and then it will be at the first level, and then the second level, the third level, and that's a perfectly reasonable ideal curve. Another one is to say, well, maybe the ideal curve is halfway in between. And really, your error there is you're shifting by pretty much half an LSB which way you're talking about your error uh, in terms of some sort of offset. But you can kind of build that either way into the conversation. The same, and so notice that this is typically going to be looked at as the distance between one LSB, and this is what you're always going to be asking on the curves. So one LSB is in between, and one LSB could also be between 0 0.25, 0 0.3, and so on. And so you can see different ways of measuring it. You want to be specific on how you're approaching it, but this is the way that you would talk about it. Now, and then the flip side is true whether it's an analog element in and digital out. And, and again, you have one LSB. You can take things through the middle. 
or you can take things shifted over by one, different ways, different approaches. One of the things that you notice is that if you talk about, you know, in terms of the analog structure, what is the quantized noise, you know, obviously this is a fully analog structure, right? So if I took the difference between this ideal curve, which is the actual signal, and the uh, actual quantized value, I realize there is some error that's increasing, and then at the step it drops, and so I see it's going back and forth through here in terms of its error. This turns out to be really important in terms of just seeing um, you know, that you are actually still creating some errors in your representation, but it's now within half an LSB on both sides. And this is what you'd want to expect for a data converter of a certain resolution, of a certain precision. Okay. And sometimes then we'll talk about what is the what is the error from this absolute ideal quantized curve, or it is from the original analog value, and you can talk about those, um, again, you want to be precise. And what you might find is there's some very specific errors that will show up. So for example, imagine my actual characteristic look like this particular line, uh, whereas the you know, ideal curve we can see here, and here's where your ideal characteristic might be. Again, looks kind of like this level shift of down curve, like here. What's the difference between the two? Well, basically it just looks like this thing had an offset and shifted up by one amount in terms of the DAC. So it might have meant that there was an offset. Like in your circuit, there might have been some extra voltage offset in there. Well, again, if I have a voltage offset, that is an error, and that is going to give me an INL error. By the way, the, the DNL error is basically nothing, but the INL error is a fixed value. And it's important to get a sense of the kinds of errors, because if it's a constant offset, I could probably correct for that, like somewhere else in my circuit. I could correct for it very simply by just changing my code by, well, let me think, by maybe a fact, by just one here, right? Because, you know, one, one and a half. Okay, that's a straightforward thing. Um, a different kind of curve might be, oh, look, that this is the actual line, but it actually turns out it's going a little faster. So it's something we call a gain error. So the LSB is changing. So we'll see this in a couple different ways in the INL and DNL curve. What you see is the INL will continue to increase with code, 